Hi everybody, it's Liz from Grow Your Mindset and our Mindset and You interview today is a little bit different because I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Jenny Artley. Now our paths first crossed nine years ago back in 2011 when Jenny did her PGC, part of her PGC placement with myself, so I was her mentor sounds really good doesn't it <laughs> um, and she came to my school and was in my year two class at the time and how long I can't remember how long you spent was it about six, it was around eight weeks eight weeks um, on a placement with me so um, Jenny's here to talk today because she's coming in talking about mindset in terms of being a teacher but also in terms of being a young mum and most recently in terms of becoming a business owner as well okay so jenny do you want to just introduce yourself and then we'll start having a little bit more of a question session yeah so i'm jenny and i have a little boy he's 18 months old now arthur um i've been teaching for eight years mostly key stage two and i've recently left my school to set up my own business doing pre and postnatal fitness classes um, so mum and baby or toddler sessions um, as of September so that's really exciting. So exciting right. journeys in all directions there haven't we? Fantastic. So if we take your journey right back to when you were on practice pretty much when myself and Gemma began to explore the importance of mindset we realised very quickly as teachers that it was the foundation of learning. But when I reflect back to my experiences at university, there was nothing in relation to developing this sort of theory-based um, principle in my classroom. It was all very core subject structured or um, depending on where you went with your dissertation. So I chose science, so it was very much subject-based. When you were at teacher training, did you attend any lectures at all because you were later on than me? So were they starting to introduce it at your university when you were training as a teacher? No, same as you. Um, I didn't have any specific training in mindset during my teacher training. And I definitely think it would have been worthwhile. Um, I first came across the concept of growth and fixed mindset in my first couple of years teaching. Um, and I, I really did see great value in it. I thought it was fantastic, but I also think that I had some misconceptions in my understanding around it. Um, there's a lot of resources available online and on teacher resource websites and things like that. Um, but I think simplify the idea quite a lot in a way that's not always helpful to the children. So you get a lot of kind of the the posters with the don't say this but say this don't say i can't do it say i can't do it yet <laughs> but without giving them any kind of strategies or support for doing that and helping them to change their mindset mm. um, so i think i think fundamentally the approach i took to teaching did incorporate naturally a lot of the ideas that you work on with children and adults through growing mindset and I observe them in your classroom as well. Um, but I think this year, since working with you and you coming into work with my class and staff at, at Green Hill, I've been able to clarify my own understanding a lot more, which has really impacted on the children that I was working with. So in that in terms of that then, if if it's if if the developing a growth mindset is the foundation for learning then hopefully universities will see that it's pertinent enough to be able to develop courses on that for new teachers coming through the through the ranks i think i think it's something that they're going to definitely have to look at do you agree with that 100 percent, definitely mm -hmm. like you say the focus for me i don't know if it's any different now but the focus for me was definitely on curriculum and what you teach yeah. Um, and how you might go about that in, in terms of planning lessons but there certainly wasn't so much around mindset and if you think if the, if the children aren't in that kind of mindset if they don't feel secure and safe within their learning environment it doesn't matter what you teach or how you teach it because yeah. that, that's yeah. the foundation of it for them isn't it 
plus as well it's about the teacher's mindset because as i know for myself i i was giving fixed messages unknowingly because i was defaulting to my unconscious bias which yeah. i was unaware of and yeah. um, you, you know so you're giving these messages out that could be magnifying fixed mindsets in your class without even realizing it and we have Absolutely. spoken a few times to um, a great guy james anderson and he said every day as a teacher you go in the classroom and you impact on mindset whether that be a fixed or a growth so yeah. every day you impact on mindset it's which one do you want to magnify the most and hopefully for all teachers it's the growth mindset but how do we do that so that, that's something that i think really is pertinent for teacher training now yeah because it's, it's very easy to say isn't it um, but if you don't have any, it's just like I said with the children, it's easy to say, oh, you need to have a growth mindset, you need to do this and things like this. Yeah. If you're not helping them to do that or promoting that yourself in the right ways and giving them strategies, then you can't, it's the same with teachers, you need, they need the training and, and the understanding to be able to take that forward with them. Exactly. And that, at the moment I'm working, um, doing some one-to-one -one work and this child has got a really good knowledge now of what growth mindset looks, sounds and feels like and is on a real journey. So it's now taking that to the next stage in terms of managing his impulsivity because he just jumps into things straight away. And I just, I'm reflecting now thinking if you can have a whole class that have that understanding of mindset and then you can pinpoint persistence and all these other little toolkits that they can then, what sort of life skills you develop in there yeah, it's surely the earlier the better as well, isn't it? So you know, we, you came in and worked with my class at year six. If we could have got in with them oh. when they were four or five years old, yeah, it might have been a different journey for them. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, let's think about that. Thinking about your journey into the teaching profession. So, what actually was it about teaching that drew you to the profession in the first place? So all my um, experience leading up to that point was um, working with children. So I've done oh, right. kind of work experience placements in preschools. And then from being 16, my weekend job was a children's party entertainer for, for a good few years. So wow. it was great. Yeah, I spent my weekends dressing up as a princess or a superhero <laughs> and doing the cha-cha slide many, many times. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so I've got a lot of experience working with children. Um, my degree is in English language and linguistics. So I chose to base my final dissertation around how literacy is taught within primary schools. So that gave me a chance to go into different schools and get a bit of a feel for it, find out a bit more about teaching. And I also met some really inspiring teachers that that kind of helped me make up my mind that that was the, the career path I wanted to take. Um, I just, and what I really loved about it was seeing people take what could be considered quite dry material from the curriculum and making it exciting and engaging for the children. So, yeah. not to start sucking up to you or anything, but honestly, you were one of the most creative teachers that I have come across. <gasps> And so genuinely, <laughs> and you did, you, you have such a talent for making lessons fun and engaging and memorable for the children. And that was something that I really tried to take forwards with me into my career. Um, and when you do that, and when you put that effort in and you, and you are creative, what you get back from the children, it just makes it, and it's so worthwhile. Um, yeah. So yeah. like at the end of year six, when children, well, they did at our school, they write the memories of the hallway through school and to see them writing about specific learning and experiments and lessons that I'd done with them two, three, four years prior to that and it's yeah. still remembered, just, yeah, it makes it worthwhile. Definitely does, doesn't it? And I always used to think when I was planning my lessons, I'm the type of person that used to get quite bored quickly if I kept repeating the same thing. So I did it. I was always looking for technology or things to make things a little bit more engaging but inspiring for the kids. And I used to think, do you know what, if I'm sat in that chair for all these hours in a day, what would I want to really make me engage in? So I used to put myself in the shoes of the child and think yeah. about 
using music, using visuals, using, do you know what I mean? Thinking about all the different things because it's a long day for a child to be sat in a, in a seat, you know, and getting them up and moving, which is why I love the Kagan stuff as well. Yeah, introducing all that. So, yeah, so. And what you debate now is how much, you know, Twitter and Facebook and social media, you can pick up so many great ideas from other teachers sharing as well. So it's really yeah. nice. That you, you can have that online community and all we can share from each other which definitely helps. And, and you know and it's one of those that's mindset in itself because some teachers that i see on twitter feel threatened by what they're seeing now because you, they're seeing people's classrooms and the way they're being decorated and the way they're being displayed and they're already feeling threatened about oh i should be doing this i should be doing you know what i mean and it's like the comparison in the within the profession really do have quite a detrimental effect on my yeah. and well-being as well as being inspired by these people as well so you've got people's mindsets on that continuum all the time haven't you yeah absolutely yeah. so being inspired by people is a good way to go <laughs> definitely so i said earlier that our past i can't believe it's nine years ago when we first met but recently more recently like you said i came into deliver our mindset motivation um program with your year sixes but how has your journey of developing your mindset and becoming mindset aware impacted on you personally, but also professionally? So those sessions that you did with my class were a game changer really for both them and for me as well. Um, and I fully believe in the impact of working on mindset and on their attitudes. Um, but I think just like you said before, I've done a lot of things in the past without even realising that mm. I haven't truly encouraged a growth mindset within my classroom. Um, and I think there can be a lot of pressure, even in primary schools at the moment, on teachers and on the children as well. And I think sometimes the, the focus on effort um, and attitude that, that children bring to the classroom can sometimes be outshone by the focus on results and and you know what the school needs to get or mm -hmm. um, driving them forwards so like I mentioned earlier about having some misconceptions prior to your visit one of those was was about the getting friendly with your fixed session all right so I think the resources that I've seen before you came and did your sessions um, they almost make out it's really bad to ever think in a fixed way and you know no don't have a fixed mindset that's terrible mm. um, and those sessions allowed me and the children to realize that actually yeah everybody feels that way sometimes and it's okay to feel that way mm. as long as we try and start nudging ourselves to that more growth approach um then it's all right and i think that that was a huge one for me to go yeah. oh, actually, you know, even as a teacher or as a person yeah i feel i do feel fixed sometimes but right what can i try and do about that you yeah know, it's, it's, it's about changing your perspective isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. i definitely did that um okay. and then another session that had a massive impact was the one you did about um learning zone versus performance zone oh uh, yeah yeah, so um, it was really interesting actually to see how many children did feel that they're in their performance zone within lessons and within the learning um, and they're frightened to make mistakes for whatever reason and, it, and it's a barrier for them. Mm. Um, and by doing your, doing your sessions with the class, with me in there as well, I think that was really important that I was there with them on that journey. Um, we had something to refer back to then for the rest yeah. of the year. So when we came across those moments where somebody was, you know, a bit stuck, feeling a bit fixed, we could work together on it, or we really could celebrate the having a go and, and taking risks in your learning, even if you don't get it straight away, or if you, you know, you don't get it quite right, mm. that's fine. And it was really nice to have that say, oh, remember what Liz said about this? So, you know, what can we do? Well, what can we say? How can we work on this? Yeah. Um, it, was just, it was nice to have that to, to think back to all together as a team. Yeah. Um, 
that's one of the things that we say when myself and Gemma go into schools it's so important for the teacher to be on the journey and the TA yeah. be on that yeah. journey with the children to be self-reflective and you were really open and honest with your kids I mean I remember after that lesson you talked to them about your perfectionism yeah and, absolutely yeah, and you said, listen guys I feel like I should be performing all the time when actually it's my first year in year six I'm actually yeah. learning and, and your yeah. perfectionism was coming out in terms of it's got to be right spot on first time and, yeah. and it's interesting because we've talked to quite a few teachers who have those perfectionism issues and they want the books to look good they want everything to look spot on and their perfectionism is rubbing off on the kids and then they're thinking oh everything's got to be right everything's got to look perfect or else yeah. it's not good enough and then children sort of like focus more on the presentation rather than the content so then when you give them feedback to improve that content it's like oh but it's all really nice and it looks good and I don't want to have to do it again because I might not be able to get it as good as that next time and it's really yeah. interesting their thought processes definitely definitely and then yeah. some of the, um, the more practical things that we talked about as well really really helped so just for example you talked to me about giving um, progress marks back to the children oh, yeah. instead of sharing their scores and so you might have a child who scored 40 out of 50 on one test and 41 out of 50 next time so they've improved by one whereas yeah. you might get a child who scored seven on the same test and then the next time scored 14 so they've actually you know doubled their score their progress mark was really high yeah. um and it really it by celebrating that progress it really boosted the self-esteem of some of the children in my class who previously might have compared their mark with the person next to them and yeah. felt bad about it they were saying oh i've got seven more than last time i've got seven yeah um and it, it really helped and obviously you know you've got children who are going to score high scores every time and I'm not saying that shouldn't be celebrated because yeah. the likelihood is they're doing really well because they work hard at it yeah. and you know, they're, they're they're in their learning zone they're, they're putting the effort in their learning zone ready for that performance zone but that doesn't exactly. mean that other person who's exactly. getting seven or fourteen isn't doing that as well. It's just exactly. their neuron you know the neural pathways yeah. are being as are as developed or aren't as practiced. Yeah. Yeah and it just it's about acknowledging that, that effort and it not just being oh well I didn't get as much as them yeah because they've put in that effort they've you know they have strengthened those pathways and they're they're making progress and that's great yeah yeah because remember developing that culture of growth it's about creating an ethos where um, you know your abilities can be developed whereas a fixed mindset classroom is very much intelligence ranking so it's very yeah. much where do I fit in in the pecking order in terms of being smart or clever and it's about yeah. breaking that down because i do feel as an educational system not just in the uk but when we talk to teachers across different countries it is very much academic based um, yeah. and i think we need to shift and i think with covid and everything else we have got an opportunity now to make change because yeah. of the situation that we're in so i'm just fingers crossed i just hope there are enough strongly visioned head teachers out there who, I mean, and I've seen them on Twitter, they're ready for change. Yeah. <laughs> but there are a lot who are ready to just fall back into what they always do and be driven yeah. by us. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Which is a shame. So we talked a lot about teacher, the teacher side of you, but you've got many sides. And your mummy to Arthur, who is absolutely adorable. Um, so do you think understanding and having the knowledge of mindset as a parent is powerful and what things have you become more aware of as one of the main influences now around Arthur? Yeah, I think it's hugely powerful. Um, yeah. It is the strangest thing how habitual it is, even when you've not had a child before, to say, oh, clever boy, when they do something for the first time. And I've really tried to be conscious, um, right from him being tiny, of the language that I use yes. towards him. 
And I think, especially when he was really little and didn't have a clue what I was saying, some of my friends and family found it quite humorous when I was saying, <laughs> oh, you're trying so hard to roll over. You're putting so much effort in. <laughs> we were like, have well. you not said yet? You've got an opportunity to grow your brain. Wait until that one comes out. That would be great. <laughs> oh, we'll get there, definitely. Um, <laughs> but I've just, I've tried to form habits within myself, I suppose. Yeah. That, um, that encourage determination and, and you know, you, you've met him. He's, he is a very determined little character, especially yeah. when there's cake involved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, but you, I mean, you pointed out when you came into, into school that little ones don't give up trying to walk. No matter how many times they fall over, they get up and keep trying. But at some point, a lot of children do start giving up and, and, you, and do get that fear of failure. Mm. Um, so I just really want to kind of encourage all things growth as much as I can with him. Yeah. And, and the language that I use towards them is the main way that I'm trying to do that at the moment with him being so little. It is. I mean, language plays a huge part in terms of your journey as an influencer, but also your internal dialogue, your thinking voice that you say to yourself. So language, I would say, in terms of a growth mindset journey, is probably 80% of the journey. Um, and yeah, for a young child, I mean, it's about finding your inner baby, because like we say, babies ask lots of questions they're curious they want to find things out they smile at everybody they keep going they're resilient and then there's a certain thing for us then to be able to have that growth mindset and then suddenly become default into a fixed mindset from about i'd say about age four or five that's quite a change that to be born growth and then default to a fixed at four or five is, is a massive change in thought processes and beliefs and all the rest of it. So yeah, I, parents play a huge part, which is why when we do the work with classes, we invite parents in for that session so the children can share their learning. Um, and it is a bit of an eye opener for parents. They don't understand yes. fully what growth mindset is. They've seen the posters maybe, they've seen schools, with a growth mindset display up but that's about it it's a bit wallpaperish um but it's about getting parents to engage in that for themselves because some parents because of their own experiences of education will have a fixed mindset towards education so it, it's a bit a bit of a battle in terms of delivering that message into because they're the biggest influencer of their child if you think about a child spends a thousand hours in school in an academic year but five thousand hours at home you've got a big area and that's what used to sort of frustrate me in a way as a teacher because i'd be developing that growth mindset ethos in class and i'm sure you felt this to go away for a holiday for easter and come back and it'd be like things that's been unraveled because of the messages being given at home um in terms of making mistakes or going you know comforting children so they don't face the challenge instead of letting them struggle um, and those sorts of things. So yeah, parents play a massive issue. So the fact you've got that background knowledge already puts you in a really good position. Yay, fantastic. <laughs> so it says here, can you therefore see the value of schools engaging parents in the journey for themselves? Why would you yeah. say schools? Yeah, no, I definitely think um, there's a great benefit to getting parents involved like the like you said the parents who come to our showcase at the end of the course um, they absolutely loved it mm. and I think growth mindset is something that all parents want to encourage really hear yeah. about it they all want to encourage it in the children but just like I have as a teacher um, they might have their own misconceptions around it or um, you know naturally like like we've talked about they naturally putting those things onto their children in a fixed way or or by accident mm. um, and, and subconsciously promoting a fixed mindset in a way. Um, so I know I know as both a, a teacher and a parent and all round that I'm not I'm not an expert. I'm still on the journey with this. Um, I've definitely not got it all sussed out. But 
I think the more parents have access to the kind of information that you you share, the better and the better for the children. Yeah, definitely. If they can if they can reinforce the messages of schools that are on a growth mindset journey, that's going to have a major impact on their child's development and their mental tools to be able to deal with challenges that we face and they're not going to go away but it's how you internalize those challenges and those setbacks that you come across through life um, yeah. big difference in terms of your well-being and parents are on board with it that's that's a major part of the journey so your part of your journey is changing which is yeah. you're almost in the same position now that me and Gemma were in in 2017 when we um well 2018 when we launched but we were starting to develop our grow your mindset business so you're in the process of preparing your new business and as we know mindset can impact massively on entrepreneurs especially within the current landscape of covid so how do you think it will help you to develop and grow sweaty mama how's your mindset going to impact on that journey um, well, I, do, I will honestly say that the approach that I've taken towards launching my own business has been influenced greatly by the work that you did with me in school. Um, I think it's sometimes, it can sometimes be really easy to stick with what you know and then keep plodding rather than make a change that you actually might be really ready for. Mm -hmm. So I've completely retrained as a pre and postnatal fitness instructor. Um, which has been a lot of work and it's been a huge leap of faith. Um, and in the past, I'll be honest, there would have been tears and tantrums and I can't do this, I'm going to fail over exams and tests and, you know, getting going with it all. But I honestly can say that I've approached it all so much more calmly um, with the kind of attitude of I'm going to do my best, I'm going to focus on what I can do and you know not not the things that are maybe out of control which there are a lot of at the moment yeah definitely uh, I think the path, like, like, like i shared with my class i i have i've worried constantly about what other people think of me and or what will they think if i fail this exam and and i've just really tried to to keep my focus on my end goal what i'm working towards and and what i i can do to get there um, and I'm sure that there'll be plenty of obstacles as I continue into this business. I don't know if there'll be any quite as big as a global pandemic to contend <laughs> with, hopefully. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the kind of mindset that I want to take forward now through the next, next stage of my business, really, and just, just yeah. keep it positive and keep focused. Well, they say, don't they? We don't grow when things are easy. We grow when we face challenges. So, uh, so start your first business in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> but your positivity is oozing. You know what I mean? You, you, you can tell you, you're on this. You, you want this. You've got that goal. And like we just talked, we talked before we actually started the the meeting in terms of you're so proud of your achievements so far that it gives you that boost forward so you know what i can do this and it's that positive dialogue and when you have that fixed take it on that journey with you hang on no you're not stopping me from like, making me think this i'm going to do this instead and flip that screen. yeah has jason seen a difference in you yeah definitely okay. definitely yeah right. um the, like i say the, I, I was terrible for perfectionism and and I wouldn't just I, I, well I would get incredibly stressed about so many things even from just a lesson planning if it wasn't going quite right or I couldn't find the resource that I quite wanted or it wasn't good enough um so yeah yeah there's a, a big change that you've noticed that's brilliant. just coming down to it <laughs> <laughs> so it's not the gin doing that it's your mindset <laughs> Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So, I mean, everyone, I mean, Sweaty Mama, I'd never even heard of it until I spoke to you about it. Is it actually a UK franchise or is it American? 
No, it's UK. Yeah, oh, the right. founder is actually from Chorley. Hannah. Oh, really? Yeah, so right. it started off in Chorley. Um, so I'm quite local, really, to where it started from. But yeah, it's UK wide now, doing really, really well, popping up all over the place. Yeah. Um, it, is, it is a great, a great brand, a great franchise. They're really supportive, which has helped as well. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so if so people want to find out more, where, where do they go? What, what would they do? So I have got my Facebook page and my Instagram, which are both under Sweaty Mama Berry. And my website is berry.sweatymama.com. So it's fun, effective workouts with little ones, right from six weeks old all the way up to four years. Oh um, I know. How do you lift up a four-year-old? <laughs> you get really strong. No, you don't. You don't have to lift the four-year-olds. <laughs> all right. <laughs> They, they can join in alongside. Oh, but, brilliant. Oh, fabulous. Oh, well, that's so really I'll good. Look, look, um, the picture that I sent you earlier. Yeah. I about four on that picture, wasn't it? I thought I was 18 months old. I think I'll get it the other way around and he can put me in the carrier. And, yeah. And do the exercise. Fantastic. Well, you know what? It's so exciting. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. And it's been really nice because it's, We've had people coming from a business angle and we've had people who have written books or they're on um, sort of they're like in SLT or the leadership role type within education. And to speak to you, you are a normal teacher like millions of other <laughs> teachers out there. You yeah. are a normal mother like everybody else and you're taking a risk to do something new and it, your mindset I can see from your answers there that your mindset is underpinning everything that, yeah. that is driving you forward. So that's that's amazing. So thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank and, you very um, much. I'll be looking out for your posts and videos. And God knows, my, my son's 22 this time, so I doubt he'll want to come to Sweaty Mamas. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. I might drag him along. <laughs> But yeah, you take care of yourself and keep growing your mind. Thank you. See you later.